Plus is your typical Samsung powerhouse. There is a Snapdragon 855 chipset inside with either eight or 12 gigs of RAM, a whopper of a 4,300 milliamp hour battery, and up to 512 gigs of storage. You can expand further with a micro SD card, all of which sits behind a gorgeous 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED screen it is. And I know what some of you are thinking already. A 6.8 inch screen sounds massive, but because Samsung all but eliminated the bezels around the display, it's actually easier to hold than last year's Note 9. And despite being very slightly taller and very slightly wider, the Note 10 Plus is actually lighter than the Note 9 as well. That means we are working with a smaller 6.3 inch AMOLED screen, a 3500 milliamp hour battery, and specs that have also been slightly dialed down. Unless you live in Korea and you splurge on a 5G model, you're working with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage with no expandable memory at all. No matter which version of the Note appeals to you though, you're largely getting the same experience. Both have been designed and built really well, this time with a focus on symmetry. You can see that in the sort of center mounted cutout in the screen for that front facing camera. Speed button, that one that you probably mashed all the time by accident, it is gone. If you really, for some reason, wanna to talk to Bixby, you can either use voice commands or set the phone up so that a double click of the power button launches it. For better or worse, the headphone jack is also gone. Also, Samsung can make these phones thinner and fit some big batteries inside. Galaxy Note without the S Pen. Last year, Samsung turned these stylus into a Bluetooth remote. This year, it's kind of a Bluetooth magic wand. All of those leaks were spot on. If you hold the S Pen's button in the air and wave the thing around, you can perform specific actions like switching between the front and rear cameras and even zooming in on your subject. We tried a few of these and some of them were much better than others. Flicking up and down to jump between the cameras worked pretty well, but to zoom, you have to draw a C in the air and let go of the S Pen button once you've zoomed in enough. The problem is getting that timing down is actually really tricky to the point where I could see some people getting really frustrated and never really trying this again. Didn't seem to realize what I was doing at all, so it took a 50 photo burst instead. For now, Air Actions only work with first party apps, but Samsung has made a software development kit available to companies who might want to give their apps a little Wingardium Leviosa flair. Honestly though, I can't imagine too many people will actually bother with this gimmick and that's perfectly fine by me. From the moment you start writing on the note with the S Pen, the phone interprets your words and indexes them so you can search for specific things. With the help of that handy neural processing unit as part of the 855, you can also transcribe your handwritten notes to text with decent and sometimes surprisingly good accuracy, but I wouldn't rely on it heavily. You can also export them as Word docs and PDFs. At the very least, it does make dragging and dropping files from your phone to your computer pretty easy. And I could see people who work in public spaces on public computers being able to take their stuff, work on decks, and take it all with them when they go. There are some things that Samsung hardly changed at all, like the triple camera system around the back. It's basically very similar to what we saw. Samsung's cameras did get a bit of a boost when it comes to video though. A live focus mode makes it really easy to shoot bokeh filled video of people just kind of dancing around in front of you. And a new feature called zoom in microphone uses multiple mics in the device to target the audio coming from your subject and sort of minimize everything else. Tried a lot of the S10's new features and we liked most of them. There are some that we haven't gotten to test yet, like one that allows you to install some software on your PC and basically stream any game you have installed onto your note. It sounds a little too good to be true, but we'll just have to wait and see what's up there. After spending some time with both of these phones, I'm honestly a little torn. I can't help but be drawn to the absurd power and the big screen of the Note 10. And I know I probably sound repetitive, but the smaller Note 10's design feels so good. 